It says, number 26, use the binomial theorem to extend each power of a binomial. So, in order for us to use the binomial theorem, what do we need? We need the pattern. That means we need a Pascal triangle. You guys remember that? Here we go. We got 1, 1, 1, 1. I'm sorry. 1, 2, 1. 1, 3, 3, 1. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Now, where do you start, Mr. Q? Where do you stop? Where I stop, look up, because this is telling us that we need what? Row 4. And as soon as you see a 4 in your patterns, did I come to a 4 already? Yeah, it's right there. That means I'm going to use this pattern. Yes? Okay, good. So, here we go. This is term 1 and term 2. So what's my first number, my first coefficient? 1, so I write 1 times x to the 4 times negative 2 to the 0. Remember these? What's my next coefficient? 4. So we do plus 4. And from this point forward, look up. These values for x keep going down at each term. And these values for negative 2, the exponents keep going up 1. So here we go. x to the third, negative 2 to the first. Next value, 6. We get what? x to the second, and negative 2 to the second. Once again, notice that the x values, the exponents for those keep going down. 4, 3, 2. Well, guess what we're going to have on the next term? Next term is what? 4 plus 4x to the first and negative 2 to the third. So, once again, for the term negative 2, the exponents keep going up. So we get to which power? The, for the second term. So we get to the fourth. The other one till we get to the zero. Yes. Thank you. Chance. All right. And the last coefficient is 1. So plus 1 x to the zero and negative 2 to the fourth. Am I done using my coefficients here from the pattern? Yes. Now we just simplify. Nice. Here we go. And also, mental note, what did we say? Any number to the zero exponent is 1. So if I have a star here, star to the zero, 1. Also, any number to the first exponent is the number itself. So let's say I have a star to the first, what do I end up with? A star, because it's the same number. So here we go. What is negative 2 to the zero? negative 2 to the 0, to the 0 exponent is 1. So what is 1 times 1? 1, and we're left with x to the 4th. Plus, let's see, what is negative 2 to the first power? Negative 2. What is negative 2 times 4? Negative 8, bring down the x cube. And we don't, we don't need this anymore. We can put this in parentheses. I'm going to erase this. There it is. Next. So we're done with this term. Let's go to this term. What is negative uh, 2 squared? Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4 times 6. Positive 24x to the seconds. We're done with this term. So we're done with this one, this one, and this one. So we're here now. Negative 2 to the third power. And once again, look up to the screen, please, really quick. 
Remember, whenever you have an odd number exponent like this one and like this one, you see that it's an odd. One is an odd. Three is an odd. Yes? Uh, Davina, there's one right here or one over here in the front. Um, and if it has a negative base, that means the whole thing is negative. So this one will be a what? Negative. Okay, so let me put that sign first. Negative. So let's see. What is 2 cubed? 2 times 2 times 2 is 8 times 4, 32. And you're like, isn't that negative? Eight? Yeah, I already put the negative here. 32 and bring down the x to the first. So we're done with this one. Last but not least, what is x to the 0? 1. What is 1 times 1? One? 1. So we're left with negative 2 to the 4th power. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. Times negative two. And that is positive 16. And we're done. The process one more time. What do we need? We need, first of all, we need to write our, our triangle. 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Mr. Q, how do, how do I know where to stop? Well, what row are they asking us to use here according to the exponent, row 4. As soon as you see a row that has a 4, then you stop and you use that pattern. Thank you. Yes? Yes, that's a Q. All right, let's go to number 27. Very similar. Only funner. <laughs> funner. Did I say that? All right. All right, for that one, write your triangle, please. There's a couple of spots right there. Um, all right, let's see. You should have written 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1. How did I get this 2? Because 1 plus 1 is 2. And it always starts with 1. 1. What's the next number? 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 1 is 3. And you end it with 1. You always start with 1 and end with 1. Next, 1. What is 1 plus 3? 4. What is 3 plus 3? Six, what is 3 plus 1? 4, and you end it with 1. Do you see a 4 already? Yeah, because that's the row that they want. Is that correct? So we're going to use this pattern again. So you box your pattern, and we start the first coefficient, which is what? 1 times what? 2x to the 4. We always start with the first term. What is my second term? Negative y to the 0. First term always with a main power and the second one to the zero. We're done with this term. Bless you. What's the next term? Plus 4, 2x to the what? Third, negative y to the first. Remember, these exponents will always add up to that power. Okay? Yes, Mr. Q. All right, good. Next one, plus 6. 2x to the second, negative y to the second. 2 plus 2, 4, yep. Next one, plus 4, 2x to the first, negative y to the third. And move these out of the way. Give me a second. <laughs> Technology. I love it. And the last one plus 1, there's a space right there, Jay, right there, 1, parentheses, 2x to the 0, and negative y to the 4. Now that we have this, let's uh, simplify. What is negative y to the 0? 1. Any number to the 0 is 1. So let's see, what is 1 times 1? 1. So we're left with 2x to the 4th. So that means 2x times 2x times 2x times 2x. 2 times 2, 4 times 2, 8 times 2, 16x to the 4th. We're done with this one.
Now we are here. Look at this one, negative y to the first. Notice that this is a what? Odd power. Does it have a negative sign here? Yes, that means the whole thing is negative. Okay, so let's see. So negative, so we're done there. So let's look at this one. Two to the third, what is two to the third? Two times two times two, which is eight. Eight times four is 32, and that's x to the third and y to the first. Go to this one. Uh, negative, negative y times negative y is positive, so we're done with that. This one, two squared, what is two times two? Four times six, 24, x to the second, y to the second. All right, let's go to this one. We'll notice again, it's an odd number exponent with a negative base. So that means the whole thing is what? Negative. So let's see. Two to the first is two. Two times two, two times, I'm sorry. Two times four is eight. So we're done with that. So we're left with x, y to the third. And last but not least, everyone, what is 2x to the zero? One times one is one. So that means this is negative y times negative y times negative y times negative y, which is positive y to the fourth. Hands if you got that by yourself. Okay, good. This remind me of me in kindergarten. That was number 27. Let's go to 28. 28. Were you good? All right. Back to the polynomial by grouping. Your favorite. Yay. Here we go. Since it has four terms, I group the first two and then the second two. Question. What is GCF for these two? X to the second. And we're left with X plus 7. Mr. Q, how did you get that? Well, first you figure out what is your GCF, and then you're going to divide each term by the GCF. So if you divide by X to the second, this is a giant 1, and we're left with 7. You subtract the exponents, and we're left with X to the first. Go to the second one. Plus. What's GCF for these two? Six. So once again, if you don't see it, divide each term by the GCF. Giant one, we're left with what? X, and this one is plus seven. What are my factors? Factors are X plus seven, that's one. What do we have left here? X squared plus seven. Can we factor any more? No. These are my factors. It's coming back, yes? Yes, Mr. Q, these are my favorites. Very good. All right, number 29. Are we good? Yeah? Is everybody so quiet? What's going on? Because I'm recording or what? Or you're concentrating? Damn. Okay. Again, by grouping, how many terms do we have? Four. So that means I group these two and these two. And if it has a subtraction, I'll put a little plus there because we're going to group. All right. So let's see. What number divides both of these terms? One, yes, two, yes, four, yes, but what's the greatest one? Eight. That's why it's the GCF. Greatest common factor. What else do, does each term have? An X. Does each term have X to the second? Yes. How about X to the third? Yes. How about X to the fourth, both of them? No. no. X to the third. That's my GCF. And once again, divide by 8X cubed both. Divide by 8x cubed, that leaves us with x plus 
two. Next, what's the GCF for these two? What number divides both terms? Three, yes. Nine, yes. About 27. And it's a negative. That is correct. And that's one. Let's go. 27. So negative 27. Divide each term by that. So that leaves us with x plus 2. All right? So what are my factors? x plus 2 is 1. What's left? 8, whoa, x cubed minus 20 cents. Believe it or not, my writing is really nice, but this is a tablet. <laughs> Anyways, uh, before I move on though, what did I tell you about x cubes or anything to the cube power? That that's giving you a red flag, is that correct? So what is that telling us? That we can probably rewrite this. Let's see. Let me go down a little bit. We can rewrite this into more factors. That means, let's see, what number times itself three times gives me eight? Two and x, so we can write that as two x to the third. Minus, what number times itself three times gives us 27? Three to the third. I'll put that in parentheses also. All right, now we have to follow a, a pattern, the one you guys memorized, right? You made it a family math night, and you're like, gather around, people. <laughs> x cubed minus y cubed. One of the patterns is this, and we get x minus y, and times uh, x squared plus xy plus y squared. What is the second pattern? x cubed plus y cubed, which is x plus y, x squared minus xy plus y squared. They're almost identical except for the symbols. If this one has a negative first, then there's no negative on the second parentheses. If this one has a positive first, then it has a negative inside of the parentheses. That's quite the easiest way to remember. So which one looks like this? The first one, right? So I'm going to use this one for this pattern. So you're saying, how do I do that, Mr. Q? Well, look at this. X, instead of X, I'm going to use what? 2X. And instead of Y, what am I going to use? 3 to fill in this. Yes? All right, so here we go. I'm going to use this pattern. Small parentheses, big parentheses. So what goes first? X minus Y. But instead of X, what do I have? 2X minus 3. Does everybody see where I got that from? All right, next, x squared. But instead of x, what do I have? 2x, and I write it squared. Plus xy, x is 2x, and y is 3. And lastly, y squared plus, let me move this a little bit further. Three squared, and let's simplify. We're left with two x minus three parentheses. What is two x squared? Four x to the second plus. What is two x times three? Six x plus nine. And don't forget who your BFF. Remember this one? X plus two factor. Bless you. Yes? Uh, no, you'll just get points taken off. Yeah, you can stop right here, but then you're, you're going to be taken off. Let's see, one, two points. So, you want to stop? All right, let's go to number 30. Nice. All right, it says, given the polynomial 
uh, divisor and dividend, use long division. Yeah, our favorite. It's cold. All right, first, before we write our dividend, let's check to see if this is in standard form, but that it has all the power, starting with the first one. What is the first one here? Three. The next one should be what? Two. The next one, one, and then zero. Is it in a row? Yes, so that we don't need to worry about any zeros in between, so we do... Our dividend is 2x cubed minus 10x squared plus x minus 5. And our divisor is x squared minus 5. Remember these? You guys love these? Yeah? All right, good. All right, here we go. Y'all ready? All right. What number times the first term gives me this first term? 2x. So let's see. 2x times x squared is 2x cubed. Now, caution. Some of you did this last time on the home play. You did this, this, and then you subtract it and you brought whatever down. No. You need to multiply times the second term now. So what is 2x times negative 5? Negative 5x. Pay attention to this part. Neg uh, 2x times negative 5, negative 10x. Is this x? No. It's right here. So we write negative 10x. Align it to that. All right. And what do, what are we doing every time with long division? We subtract. And why do I write it here? Me, Q. Why do I do it? Me, I like to see it to remind me to do this. Distribute the negative here and the negative over here, which makes this a positive. Bless you. Very good question. Here goes why. 23 divided by 4. How many times does 4 fit in here? 5 times. What is 5 times 4? 20. All right. Let's see. How can I magically combine these? I can't unless I do what? Subtract. What does that mean? That it makes this, instead of positive 20, it's a negative 20. So I end up with 3. That's why... I show it here. Yes? All right, so what's my remainder? This cancels. Our remainder here is 11x. Now, some of you are like, Mr. Q, how come you didn't bring this one down? Because right now, I'm working with these two that were produced by the product of that. Yes? All right, here it goes again. Five times four is twenty. Right now it's positive, right? What is the process? We need to subtract every time, right? So that means it makes it negative or the opposite of what it was. It's the opposite, which is negative. So let's go here. Check this out. Two x times negative five is negative ten. But since we're going to subtract, it makes it what? A positive. Yes. Yeah. All right, let's bring down our next term. What's our next term? Negative 10x squared. And we start all over. Here we go. What number times this first term gives me this first term? Negative 10. Negative 10. So negative 10 times x squared is negative 10x squared. Negative 10 times negative 5, that's positive. 50. Do I put it under here under the x? No, I put it over here on the side. Positive 50. And what are we doing? We're subtracting. Why do you show that, Mr. Q? To remind me to do what? Distribute and change these. This becomes a what? Positive. And this one? Cancels. We're left with uh, 11x minus 50. Now, some of you are like, Mr. Cube, couldn't we just do this here? Fine. But I'm showing the steps so you guys can see the process. Now I bring the last term. What's my last term? Negative 5. Therefore, what do I have left? I have 11x minus 55. This is my remainder. Are we done? No. Let's write down our next number. What's our whole number, by the way? No, what's our whole number? 
2x minus 10. That is correct. And what's our remainder? We put plus. Our remainder is 11x minus 55 over x squared minus 5. Yes? But, um, so, good question. Look up. Kaylani is asking, Mr. Cube, why did you stop here? Well, what number times x squared gives me x? Is there such a number that we can multiply x squared to give us x? No. No. Because remember, if we multiply, it's either going to give us an x squared or something greater than that. So. All right, we're good? All right, let's go to number, what number was this? Hold on, let me zoom out. This was 30? Let's go to 31. Oh, yeah. I'm going to give you a head start with this one. See how you do? Yes. I know, by now you guys should be like waking up like, quotient. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be like, John Mark, wake up. Polynomials. <laughs> right? <laughs> so let's double check. Does this have uh, the highest power is 3? The next one is what? 2. The next one is 1. The next one is 0. So yeah, it's got all of them. So we do the dividend. We got 12x cubed minus 4x squared plus x minus 2. Let me fix this. Oh my goodness. There you go. <laughs> our, our divisor is x squared plus 3. Alright, here we go. What number times the first term gives me this? X? 12X. All right, 12X times X squared is 12X cubed. But now we need to multiply times this. So 12X times 3 is 36X. Does it go under here? No, it goes right here, 36X. Here we go. I subtract, which means I distribute here and here. So this cancels. We're left with negative 36 plus x, that's negative 35x. Bring down the next term, negative 4x squared. What factor times x squared gives me negative 4x squared? Negative 4. Negative 4x squared. Negative 4 times 3, that's negative 12. Does it go under the x? No. Negative 12. Once again, I'm going to show the subtraction to remind me to do what? Change this to its opposite. Change it to its opposite. We're left with negative 35x. And right here, you guys can combine this. I'm going to show the step plus 12. And then lastly, bring down the last term, minus 2. So that leaves us with negative 35x plus 10. This is our remainder. Hands if you got that. Okay, good. So, let's write it. What's our whole number? 12x minus 4. Plus, what's our fraction? Negative 35x plus 10 over x squared plus 3. Yes, just like elementary, right? <laughs> Are we doing yes? Okay, I'm going to stop the video there for that part, part C, but I'm going to continue with numbers 1 through 10 right now. Give me a second. Oh, sorry. Uh, enjoy your uh, study time with your family. Bye.